look at dynamic actions. We'll figure out what they are. We'll also explore how to create and then make changes to them as well. So what are dynamic actions? Uh, first of all, before I get into this, did anybody attend the webinar we've done or seen any of the videos we've made on dynamic actions? Talha, Lance, good, good. And Mike, how about yourself? No, I haven't really looked through your site very much. Sorry. Okay. All right. No, no, no worries. Just wanted to know because um, we talk about a lot of this. In fact, I think I might even go more in depth in, in that video, but um, just didn't want to repeat too much here. But this is good. So basically, dynamic actions were a new feature introduced with Apex 4.0 that were really, really interesting. Um, my favorite feature was plugins, but when I looked at a poll run by the Apex team on their forum, dynamic actions were way ahead. In fact, they had double the vote that we saw with plugins. And uh, the whole idea behind this particular feature is to take client side behavior. And this is, you know, when you're looking at a web page and you see something change, maybe it's hidden displayed or it fades out or fades in, it does something different, uh, then that's client-side behavior. Typically that requires knowledge of JavaScript. And JavaScript, of course, is, is another language entirely that one would have to learn to be able to use it. Well, in Apex, developers are used to doing things more declaratively than one could do with something like JavaScript. So some really brilliant developers over on the Apex team said, hey, what if we make JavaScript declarative? And we'll call it dynamic actions. And that's exactly what they did. So they provide a simple wizard-based interface, like we're used to, to create all of the other components in Apex, that allows you to create a dynamic action. Now, this does make it declarative, a very small learning curve when compared to learning JavaScript. But it doesn't necessarily make learning the other technologies obsolete. Knowledge of HTML, the DOM, CSS, and JavaScript are all still very relevant. When you're working with Apex, you're working in a web-based environment. So more knowledge, the more knowledge you have of how the web works, the, the better off you are in general. You know, you encounter a problem, you understand the underworkings, you're more likely to be able to figure it out, figure it out faster. In the browser, in the DOM specification, there are a number of events constantly firing off. And in addition, now in Apex, we have some custom events. So there are the default events that you know, all the elements have. And now we have custom events, which were really, really powerful when they were introduced in Apex 4.0. We have uh, few listed here, before and after refresh. These are great, basically allowing you to attach code uh, or dynamic actions to events such as before an interactive report refreshes or after. Um, there's another one here, before page submit. So if you want to do something before the page actually gets submitted, when a user clicks the submit button, you can attach on to that event. And then there are some others, and in fact, we're going to see more and more. Part of the whole plugin architecture allows the plugin developer to register custom events with their plugins, which those events then get registered into dynamic actions on the triggering side. So uh, kind of complex, really, at the end of the day but a lot of unique possibilities for it that make interactive applications easier than ever before. Creating a dynamic action, relatively straightforward, basic uh, wizard like we're used to. The basic sequence is set the condition, configure your true and false actions, and then if you know, necessary, depending on the true false action, you select affected elements. Now, what does all this mean? Well, at the end of the day, you start with the condition. The condition meaning what event 
should happen or when should we do something dynamic? Uh, an example would be when the page loads or when the user clicks the submit button or when the user fills in a field or when a user clicks a checkbox, when a user changes a value. Right? Basically anything you're doing in your application, there's an event for that. So the condition is when they do something, then we want to do a dynamic action. The dynamic action is truly the true or false part. You know, what do you want to do because they've done that? What do you want to do because the page loaded? What do you want to do because they've changed a value? So that's the true and false actions. And the true and false actions can really range. There's quite a few. Uh, you can hide an element, for example. So when the page loads, hide this region. When the user changes the value of this item, if the value is 10, then display this region. There are lots of possibilities with dynamic actions. When you get into the dynamic action wizard, you're going to pretty quick get into a fork in the road. You have standard and you have advanced. And when you're first starting off with standard, I'm sorry, with, with dynamic actions, you probably want to stick with standard. Um, but it won't take long before you're moving right into advanced. And I wish it didn't say advanced because it's really not too bad. It's just uh, not as easy as standard. So what's the difference between the two? Fact of the matter is they're both the same. It's just that when you choose standard, the dynamic action wizard makes a few selections for you. It chooses the most common selections people first starting with dynamic actions would choose. What does that mean? So by default, it's going to choose the change event. There are lots of events happening in the browser. It chooses one for you, change. So uh, I gave you a few examples earlier, like the page loading, not that one. It's the change. So maybe a user changes a value. They change the value from uh, department 10 to department 20. Okay, so it's going to automatically choose that event. You won't even see it. Additionally, I'm, I apologize it's not listed here. What else it does is it limits the true and false actions you can choose from. There are lots of different true and false actions. But the only ones you'll find under standard are hide and show the opposites of each other, hide and show, or enable and disable. So really simple dynamic actions. That's what you can create with standard. Advanced simply opens up all the options, allows you to make more selections. So you can choose whatever event you want, and you can choose whatever true-false actions you want or that are available. Keep in mind when you're choosing the event that some have been renamed from what we often learn in HTML or JavaScript classes. Uh, the events are a little bit different, and that was done to make it easier to work with them. So you can click on the event label and actually get a mapping of the true DOM event to what they've named the event. Modifying a dynamic action is uh, something, of course, you would expect to be able to do in Apex. So the initial creation wizard will configure things for you. You can then test it. Of course, if it's not exactly right, no big deal. You can make changes to it. And it's a bit like a tree, the when condition being the parent. And your true-false actions become children. So you can, of course, modify the event that triggers the true or false actions along with any conditions. And then you can also work with true and false actions. You can modify the ones that were created from the creation wizard. But where it gets interesting is that you can actually then, during a modify, you can actually add additional true and or false actions. So you can stack them. It's kind of like the branches we talked about yesterday. You know, you can stack branches and use conditions for when they fire. Well, you can do the same kind of stuff here. So maybe if the user changes the value of department, you want to disable not one uh, region, but also an item. 
or I shouldn't say disable a region, but hide a region and maybe disable an item. Or you want to hide one thing and display something else. So you can stack the actions on top of each other and get even more functionality out of a single event. There is an advanced part when you're looking at the, the when, the parent part of a dynamic action. You'll notice that there's an event scope option. And it defaults to bind. And this is... Uh, this is what you'll use most often. But if you ever find that bind isn't working for you, and you know whatever you're doing involves a little bit of Ajax, it's replacing the elements in the DOM on the fly, well, then it may be because the event bindings were lost. And you can use live. You can change the event binding mechanism to get around that. So live and bind operate very much the same. It's just where the listener is placed in the DOM. And then we have once, and, and once just fires once rather than every time the event occurs, which is the case with the first two. So let's take a look at these. Go to the Scratchpad app, we'll find a report and form, and we'll drill over to the form. Okay, let's create a, a simple one here. We're going to do a, a basic dynamic action. And I don't really have a good driver here, which is all right. Um, typically available is a yes, no option. We'd actually have a radio button or a select list or something like that. But this will work fine. So if something's not available, uh, maybe we want to disable the list price. So let's see how we would do that. First thing you need to do is add the dynamic action. You can do that one of two ways. The driver here is product available. And then, of course, the driver affects the list price. So what you do, you start with the driver. And you right click, and you can go to Create Dynamic Action. Another option is to go to the very bottom where you see Dynamic Actions. And you can right click there and just go to Create. The advantage to you starting with the driver is that Apex will select a few things for you, like what's you know the, the starting element. So we'll go with that. I'll right click Product Available. I'll select Create Dynamic Action. And here's that fork in the road standard or advanced. And in this case, we can use standard. So you got to give it a name. And my suggestion is you name your uh, dynamic action based on the event or the when. So in this case, we'll say, uh, what was the product available changed? Or in this case, we can just say equals no. OK, so product available equals no. So notice that product available was filled in for me. That was just because I started with it. Also, the right selection was made here. We're working with an item. So that's why I start with the item. Equal to is the condition, and that's perfect. We're going to say equal to n. And here's where we specify the action. So you got to think back to your when. We said if product available equals n is no. So if it's no, it's not available, then we want to disable something. And if you look down here, it's actually going to create the opposite false action for us, which is perfect. We'll leave that checked. In other words, if it does not equal n, then we want to enable something, but it's going to do that automatically. Select what we want to do. We're going to work with an item. And it's the list price. That's what we want to disable. All right, so once we're done, we can run it. It's currently Y. We change it to N. And when I move away from the field, list price is now disabled. So we didn't write a single line of JavaScript code, and yet got the effect we were looking for. If 
we take a look at what's created, we can see the dynamic action here. As I said, it's kind of like a tree with the when part being the, the trunk. And we have some true and false branches. So you can stack these if we add multiple, change the order in which they execute, and so on. Go into product available, and you can see you can change the event, and the items, and your conditions. And then here you have your true and false actions, and you can make changes to them or add new ones. Below that is where you'll find your event scope binding. You can change that to the default, live if you're using AJAX, and then once if you only want it to fire a single time. Any questions on dynamic actions?